Hi there. Well, I have an absolutely gorgeous spark ignition engine to share with you today. This is an American made uh, Forster 29. And these 29s first came out in 1940, produced by the Forster Brothers of Illinois, I believe it was. This is a slightly later version, a post uh, Second World War. This, I believe, came out in 1947, and we can see that by the, the, the dome on the front of the, uh, the, the front housing here. We'll have a closer look at that in just a second. And these 29s were produced until about 1950, when the spark ignition were phased out and they made them uh, glow engines. But anyway, let's take a look at this lovely engine. Right, well, here we have a lovely Forster 29. And it's such a nice looking engine. And one of the things I really like is these really fine, thin fins. I just think that looks just really, really nice and kind of sets this engine off. Now we can see there's a, would have been a tank under here, a plastic tank with a lid and a fuel filler. Unfortunately, it's missing on this, but I, I will try and get an original and, uh, and make this engine whole. But we can, for now, we can just stick a, a fuel pipe on there and use an external tank. Now if I turn this round, we can see we've got the Forster 29 on the front there. I just love that, the way that's, uh, that's embossed on the front of the, the crankcase. And if we turn it round. Now, I said about this having uh, being a later version of 1947. We can see here there's a, a like a dome section on the front of this, uh, well, on the front housing. And that's because they needed to change the shape of this to allow a ball bearing to be put in in 1947. Prior to that, the front housing went in and it was just a, a, a plain bearing. So that dates this uh, quite, quite specifically, I believe. And we can see the piston in there, maybe just a really good, strong compression on this engine. So it should run really, really nice. Now, one of the things of interest about this is that it's got twin contacts. Now this is something you very rarely see on a, a spark ignition engine. There were at least three manufacturers during the 40s who were making the, uh, their engines with twin points or at least they were offering it as an optional extra, I believe. Now, when you've just got a single pair of contacts, the contacts are needed to allow the spark, just like on a, on a car, an old car, to, um, to break the, the, the power to the coil and, and produce a spark to the spark plug. Now this is a V2 spark plug. But when you've got twin points, you can have this set so that the points break at different times. And this set here, I believe, is for high speed, and this set here is for low speed and essentially the high speed is a lot more advanced so you get a faster running engine and the low speed contacts are near a top dead center and so you get kind of effectively a, a, an idle. I mean this lever here allows you to alter the timing of both of those sets of points to set it up but I think that's basically how it works so you've essentially got an engine with two speed rather than uh, the, the one speed which was very, the, the typical uh, that you would see of the time. As I say I've seen very few engines with twin points so it's really really nice to get these uh, to get this one. Now the other manufacturers that were making twin points in the 40, 1940s for the spark ignition engines were Olsen and Rice and of course Forster and Rocket Victor engines or, or May Rocket and if you have a look at this this is a lovely old advert of the time for the Olsen and Rice twin points and you can see illustrated here uh, they're showing how it works and this was an optional extra on their engines as with the, the Forsters I believe. Now I'm fairly sure I know which is the uh, which is the high speed points, the standard points that you would have got on the, on a, an engine. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this in the test stand today, and we're just going to run it on that set of points and see how it runs. And then what I'm going to do in uh, afterwards and in the next few days is work out exactly how these points work 
the timing, and then I'm going to do a separate video, which I'll post in probably about a, a week's time, which show uh, how those twin points specifically work and how they operate in practice. So essentially we'll get this in the test stand and I'll set up a switching circuit to switch between the two different settings and we'll see how that goes. But anyway, what we've got to do now is get this lovely engine in the test stand and these Forster engines have got a really, really good reputation as being good, strong runners. So I can't wait to see how it runs. Well, I've got this lovely old engine clamped in the test stand now and I'm really excited to get it running. I've got some fuel in the fuel tank and we've got an 11 by 6 Zynga prop. So let's see if we can get this thing fired up. Well, that ran absolutely beautifully. What was it? We were on about 6,500, 7,000 RPM, and it just held it really steady. I am so pleased with this engine. What a lovely runner, considering it's, what, 75 years old, and it's still got great compression, and it started lovely. I mean, it was firing from the very, from the outset. So I've really enjoyed getting this running today and I hope you've enjoyed uh, seeing it run as well. Thanks very much for watching.